Hey guys, welcome back to the RT Clinic. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about a device we're using a lot here in the hospital. I'm sure a lot of you nurses have seen it and you th and therapists out there. Um, this is our heated high flow can. This is a Max Venturi. Uh, is what the actual Max Tech uh, Max Venturi is also called. But uh, generically, it's known as a heated high flow cannula. Well, what the heck is a heated high flow cannula? Uh, well, our standard cannula, you know, delivers flows up to six liters per minute. We have high flow cannulas, cannulas that go up to 15. This cannula actually delivers anywhere from 10. You don't usually run that low, but it's usually 20 to up to 60 liters per minute. And you wonder why in the heck do I need to deliver so much flow to my patient? Well, it doesn't just deliver flow, and it goes via nasal cannula, and I'll show you the special device it hooks up with, but it, it delivers that, that increased amount of flow, and it causes a couple different things. The flow will go in, and it will actually wash out anatomical dead space in the airways. Uh, so your patients that are having trouble ventilating, our COPD patients having trouble ventilating, this will actually help them by washing out their anatomical dead space because 50, 50, 40 or 50 liters per minute is a lot of flow going in and out of their airways. So it's washing out the CO2. It also is going to cause a small amount of PEEP or CPAP. So that's going to recruit alveoli and help oxygenation. So you see there's two options here. You're going to have decreased CO2. Now it's not going to do it to the same level that a BiPAP is going to do or obviously a ventilator. But it's going to get rid of some CO2 but this is also going to oxygenate the patient. So let me show you how it works. It's a little bit funky how it works, and I'll show you, and I'll actually hook up to myself. So um, this is a very simple system. 100% uh, oxygen comes in from this line right here, into this unit right here. It comes into the back, into this flow meter. This port right here is actually where room air is brought in. We're going to put a filter on it just so we don't bring any dust. So we put a filter on it. So right now I'm going to turn it on. There's a little on off switch here in the back, right here. You can hear it start to run. And I'm gonna turn on here my, ox my oxygen cell. Now, I did make another video, which I'll be attaching in the uh, comments of this uh, to show you how to calibrate this cell. Right now, I'm not gonna worry about that. But the oxygen's coming in the back through the flow meter. Room air is being brought in. You can hear it change the sound when I include that. You wouldn't want to include that on a patient because that's going to decrease the amount of room air coming in. Therefore, take down your FiO2. So, it's, and you can see your, your oxygen, yeah, sorry, not take down, it's going to increase your FiO2. And you can see that happen with our uh, CO2, with our oxygen cell. So, room, room air coming through here, mixing with oxygen, giving you a percentage going out to your patient. So right now, you see we're running, and you go middle of the ball, so that's about 35 liters. On the side here, you're gonna see a couple different adjustments. Now we always adjust, um, we adjust our flow first and then we titrate our oxygen. So uh, what we're gonna do is find the flow that's most comfortable for the patient and they will tell you. We usually start about 30 and we increase up until, usually I'm shooting 45 to 50-ish is our goal. And once we hit that, then we will adjust our oxygen. So the flow is the bottom one, we adjust that first, then we adjust the oxygen. So we change the oxygen a little bit to whatever they need, but that flow is most important. So we're gonna change the oxygen to what they need. So even though they're getting, in this case, 40 liters, we know they're getting exactly 41, 42% oxygen. You can't do that with a standard cannula because, and you think about your patients, this is gonna work well on, this is our COPD patients that we're trying to not give them an excess amount of oxygen because they could be, um, hypoxic drive type of patients. So they can run off a hypoxic drive, but that's a whole different conversation. But we limit the amount of oxygen we get to them to target those low saturations, 88 to 92, or whatever the physician orders in that case. So, oxygen coming in again, room air coming out this right here. So we got 40 liters coming out of here, about 41% oxygen. It goes through a heater. In this case, we have a F and P plate heater. We'll run this, and we actually put fluid on it also. We'll run it on invasive mode. Invasive mode is 37 degrees, so this is going to heat up just like a vent circuit. The cool thing is, and the number one way to troubleshoot these vent circuits, this, this one right here that plugs in is actually heats the wire inside the vent circuit. These probes right here are just temperature probes. So these regulate the amount of temperature at the plate 
and then they're put on the heat heaty wire. So these are just monitoring and these are adding heat to plate and this. So if this thing would get cold, like let's say it's halfway, it's part ways to count like that, it's going to send uh, feedback back to the heater and say hey, it's too cold out here. The heater's going to crank up and get a lot hotter. But then when it gets out here, it, fi it figures out, oh, it's not that hot. So that's when you get a lot of rain out. So number one way to stop rain out is to fix this distal temperature probe. Make sure it's in there correctly. Super easy fix. Almost our, all RTs know it. Uh, it's number one way to fix any kind of rain out with these type of circuits. But this is going to hook to a little bit different device. So this is a ResMed. Um, ResMed AccuCare High Flow Cannula. This is a large one. You can see this has some really nice stretchy material on here. And this is going to plug into this right here. So right now, coming out of this, these two prongs, and these are large. These aren't your standard prongs. It's 40 liters per minute and about 48. Got a little bit of back pressure. It's about 50 or so, 51%. So that's what we're targeting. So I'm going to put this on myself. I'll show you what it looks like on a patient. It's going to feel a little weird if you ever wore one of these before. Now, this is what's going to be a little bit different about this, this one than on your patients because I do not have the heater turned on. And that's kind of important because that is the only way we can deliver this high of oxygen flow. So, this is what it should look like. Something like this. This little piece right here kind of takes the tension off of it a little bit. And it goes on your patient. Now what they're going to feel is they're going to feel a pressure right in the oral pharynx. And it actually feels like a little bit of, um, almost feels like CPAP. And it, it almost changes my voice a little bit. You can hear my voice now, and now you can hear my voice a little bit more nasally, if you could be more nasally than that. So um, this is the heated high flow cannula. Now what allows us to deliver such high flows. It is all about humidity and being at that 37 degrees Celsius and 100% saturated with water, just like we would with any tracheal tube. Because research has shown that if you do that with the air, you heat it and humidify it, it actually causes all your mucociliary escalator to work appropriately. But if you blow dry air in at 40 liters per minute, like I'm doing right now, it like locks up my cilia so and then what is, it's going to pull moisture in because it wants to heat and humidify that air where is it going to pull moisture from absolutely pull it directly from the uh directly from the airways and the mucus make it have thick nasty mucus you don't want that so what allows us to deliver these high flows it's right here heating and humidifying the air so it's extremely important you can't just run 40 liters in anybody and this is starting to get a little bit not necessarily painful because I don't want to sound like a real wuss, but it it doesn't feel comfortable. I'll say that right now. So um, anyway, um, this is what it would look like on a patient. The problem is it's not real portable because it has to run into the uh, oxygen outlet, so you really can't run it off a tank because it would run a tank down really fast. So anyway, this is how it goes. If this patient's having some shortness of breath, and I'm going to take this off just because it is ripping me up without heat on it. So. Patients having some shortness of breath, but their saturation is normal. We're going to come and look at this thing like right here. We're going to turn this one, which is our flow, the bottom one. So you're going to see my flow go from 40, let's say 45. That's going to feel a little different. You're going to see when I change the flow, it's going to change my FiO2. So after it normalizes, I'm going to adjust my FiO2 for what I was looking for before. So flow and then oxygen, flow and then oxygen. So like I said, the other YouTube video is going to talk about calibrating that side over there. You can go up to about 50 or 55. You're going to be washing out more CO2 with this, so that's really important. So with these COPD patients, especially if they're, um, if they're retaining some CO2 and they want to come off their BiPAP, it's nice to run one of these for a while. It's going to flush out their anatomical dead space, flush out their alveoli, and therefore get rid of CO2 they have. So a uh, couple keys. Heating, humidifying, starting with flow here, and then adjusting FiO2. And uh, what this is going to do is going to meet and surpass their inspiratory flow demand, which makes it a high flow oxygen device. 
and uh, it really bridges a gap in a lot of our COPD patients. So he did high flow cannula, used it a lot, uh, and you're going to see it way more on the nursing floors in the upcoming years. Uh, Vapotherm is also another type of cannula that does the same thing. A little more expensive setup, a little bit more bells and whistles. Uh, does really similar to what this does in the same concept of delivering those high flows, heating, humidifying it, washing out dead space, adding PEEP, and then also um, ventilating and oxygenating our patients and really bridging the gap between uh, between them wearing BiPAP and eating, uh, maybe, maybe taking the BiPAP off, off the rest of their face a little bit, but it really bridges that gap in a lot of your patients and it's an oxygen device. So a lot of times um, it takes a simple doctor's order and in some cases uh, changing an oxygen device is just uh, titrating for if you have a SAT to titrate for, you can move to a device like this. So gives your patients a lot of comfort, gives them a rest from their BiPAP mask, and possibly get them over the hump so they don't end up on the ventilator. So, thanks for watching. Any questions, comment below. Uh, this is the heated high flow cannula. This is uh, from Max Venturi, made by Max Venturi. Um, I don't think there's anything else to it. So, uh, but you'll see a lot of this heated high flow in the upcoming years. Thanks for watching.